title of, of my presentation is um, finding new solutions for the patients. And uh, why is that? Because and and the hospital where I'm working in, it's for orthopedics and trauma surgery. So uh, we have um, orthopedic patients in every field of orthopedics and uh, in trauma. So. As you all know, allografts or autografts um, can be used and are needed uh, for, for many indications. First of all, in osteomyelitis, that's the main focus. Um, but as well, after tumors or as after osteotomies, even in pediatric surgery or um, in other indications, and for additional grafting, for um, reconstruction of bone defects, for bone transport for docking sites. So I want to show you some some cases for, for um, all of the spectrum for the use, what is possible um, to use the bone alive. This is the case you just saw in the video, by the way. This is the, um, the MRI scan of uh, this uh, the young boy. And uh, this was the, um, the section, you, you can see the, the big uh, defect, you saw it in the video already. You saw this, um, uh, this uh, x-ray in the video as well but I just wanted to show you the, the last follow-up, which is, uh, was six weeks ago. So um, everything went well in this case, so it's a, cl a classical indication for um, dealing with uh, chronic osteomyelitis uh, of, the, of, the, of the tibia. So this was one of the successful cases. But you saw in the video the soft tissue. The soft tissue is, in my opinion, one of the, the main issues in the use of, um, of any graft and as well in uh, bone alive. Another case, upper extremity, osteomyelitis case, osteomyelitis case of the proximal ulna after fracture. And there was an implant removal, only partial implant removal and persistent um, osteomyelitis. The question is what to do in these cases, do it, doing it um, one stage, doing it two stage, remove everything, just uh, focusing the problem here, which was uh, with the sinus. But the patient, uh, he showed up in the hospital with pain and with fever, so he was um, immediately um, treated. And uh, my colleagues put uh, did the Breitman and put some chains in it, but they did not remove the, um, the, the screws. So in this case, I, um, I did one stage, not one stage, but uh, I did two stage procedure. I removed everything and filled the gap and with uh, 10 uh, cubic centimeters. And as well, in this case, with a 15 months follow-up, um, everything consolidated, healed somehow, and the patient is, um, is pain-free, and he, um, he was a sporty guy, and he's doing um, just weight-bearing. Um, yeah, so you can, uh, you can, um, uh, you can see that in, uh, even in the upper extremity, there are cases um, it's working. Another case with a chronic osteomyelitis of the calcaneum. With a chronic fistula and he suffers from diabetes and this is the, um, uh, the clinical aspect, big, big defect. So just filling the defect alone will not be enough in this case. So we did a, a two-step um, procedure, first with the spacer and then with a, with a free flap and a free bone grafting with, um, um, from, the, from the scapula. And the problem is that this scapular bone graft, of course, does not fill this cavity full. It's just, you know, a block put in the calcaneum. But the rest of, um, of this defect was filled with the bone alive. And then we removed the K-virus and did an X-ray, which was nice. But um, we did then the, the CT scan at nine months. And you can see there is, there is something. There is a, um, um, a combination of bone and bone, and, and bone alive, of grafting. So this matrix really lead, uh, uh, leads to, um, to some kind of fusion. And the interesting thing is even, um, even with the flap, the patient uh, is, um, is able to walk and uh, he's pain-free. I hope not uh, due to his diabetes. But um, this is a case with a combination of bone grafting and bone alive. Another case, this is an interesting case. Um, she had, uh, in the age of eight, she had um, a, um, a fracture of the distal humerus, which was not treated. So uh, now she showed up with a 30 degree varus of the elbow. And of course, this is disturbing. <laughs> it is, uh, it's um, it's uh, not really practical. So um, the, the goal was to do a, an osteotomy 
multiplanar osteotomy with um, uh, a broad plate. And then you have the gap here in this region. And of course, you can say, OK, just leave the gap alone. Just do nothing. It will heal. Of course, maybe. I don't know. You just you don't have to use anything here. But um, I, I filled the gap. I just had the impression uh, I have. Uh, I, I wanted to, to to put something into to um, uh, to accelerate regeneration. And in the in the follow up, you can see even if um, if it's healed here as well, the gap is um, is filled. It's stable and the, the angle is corrected. So it's not necessary. Maybe it's not necessary to fill it, but it's possible to um, avoid bone grafting. Another case, 16-year-old with a hip dysplasia, um, right side more than left side, and um, she was painful, so a decis decision was to do um, triple osteotomy. And this same thing, you can say, uh, you don't have to use gra uh, another grafting here instead of uh, uh, just using here the iliac crest graft, but there is a big gap. There is the this, um, this block is not uh, that big, there is a big, ho there is a hole here, and there is holes there. So um, I filled the rest with the putty, and um, same uh, after one year, everything is integrated. She can do full weight bearing. I just show you these cases, not that um, I'm saying uh, you have to use it in every case, and if you do not use some 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 bone graft, uh, you do the wrong thing. No, no. But this is this is possible, and it worked. Another case, tumor case. There was a bone cyst, a painful bone cyst of the of the proximal femur, um, filled, um, uh, and after one year she had pain, but pain from the from the plate which was removed, and uh, everything integrated, and she is fine now. So even in tumor cases, you can use this as a, a very good bone filler. <coughs> Same with this cyst in the proximal femur. You can see here, a painful cyst. Um, unfortunately, I did not reach everything of this cyst, um, but still now she's pain-free, but uh, I'm afraid there will be a recurrence here. Another case, a trauma case. We have many trauma cases like these. They're uh, coming to the hospital with, um, um, with a treatment which did not work. You, you can see it on the screws. There is non-union, there is pain, something. So you have many options to revise this and many options to, to use some grafting here. I decided to do revision with, uh, with the bone alive for the, just bone alive for the defect. And you can see in the, in the follow-up, there is, there is something. Bone is, bone is coming. There is a, 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 a kind of um, new, new bone or new, uh, new substance. And the thing is, she can do weight-bearing and she does not have any pain, and this is the, um, the, the good thing. But in the medial ankle, she still has pain, because the situation there was different. But I just want to, to show you, there is, um, this is a matrix which is leading to the growth of new material, new, new bone. Another one with a patella fracture, you can use it in, in uh, trauma cases as well, with the non-union um, of, the, of the patella, big, uh, big gap, big hole in the patella with reostosynthesis and, um, and healed after some months um, after debridement and filling all the non-union defect with the, with the bone alive. Another uh, case with the osteomyelitis, chronic hematogenous osteomyelitis uh, in the metatarsal bone with several operations and uh, with the closed, very good uh, soft tissues with the shortening which was treated by um, uh, filling the defect and plating and um, uh, transient wiring. And uh, this is a very new case, so I just can give you the six weeks follow-up when you can see a con still a contouring of everything. And um, yeah, he's, he's uh, partial weight bearing now, and he's uh, okay. Another, another indication for, um, for using it. Or this case, very recent case, um, six weeks ago, with a, a tumor of the proximal tibia in the biopsy. We have to do a re-biopsy because uh, in the first biopsy we did not get the uh, result I, I assumed. So what we did here, we did full tumor resection and then you have a big gap here, very big gap. And in the 16-year-old, um, of course, you can use, um, you can use uh, an autograft. He has sickle cell anemia, so um, you can think about if it's smarter to use uh, 
ilia crest bone graft or not in the age of 16. So um, I used bone alive and um, I filled everything. So yeah, hopefully he will be uh, he'll, he will be happy. So uh, another rare, maybe rare case for ACL reconstruction um, in uh, failure and in the need of revision ACL reconstruction. Uh, you have to do something with the, the bone canal, the, the drilling canal of the, um, of the uh, ACL graft. So um, we drilled everything out and filled the canal arthroscopic assist uh, in a, a arthroscopic assistance with, with the putty. And uh, now she's, uh, um, I think uh, in two or three months we will, we will do the, um, uh, the next step and the revision ACL reconstruction. So as well a, a, a non-septic case where you can use it as a, as a good uh, defect filler. So uh, this is a case with um, osteomyelitis of the tibia. He had the fracture some years ago, then he came to Europe and he showed up with um, an open, open tibia, open osteomyelitis with, uh, you can see, bending of his lower leg. He was not able to walk properly. So what we did, we did a uh, um, multiple stage procedure, first with a resection of everything, big uh, soft tissue problem here, here the different bacteria, and then we started uh, segmental transport using, uh, uh, closing the soft tissues with uh, a muscle flap. Using a transport along a plate. Why? Because after transport, and he did it uh, quite good, you can use the, the X fix and just uh, fix the segment with the plate. And then I used the um, bone alive grafting for the docking site because it was quite a long time for the transport. So um, we could not uh, achieve full, full docking here. And after a year, you can see he's doing full weight bearing um, and the regenerate um, was coming. Of course, the in the muscle flap area, there is still some swelling, but he's infection free. So in conclusion, there are many, many different indications. You can do many things. You can, uh, you can use it for, uh, for many, many, many of your patients and you can avoid using um, or harvesting some bone graft. And this is one of the big advantages. Even if you have the, the same results, you don't have the problems with the harvesting of the graft. And um, the results are quite good. We have, of course, there are results, uh, they are not good with the, the com very complex infections. But most of the cases, you see good results and the patients are quite satisfied. Of course, the costs have to be discussed. In, I, I don't know in, in, in every country where uh, how, is the how is it dealt with, but uh, in Germany, of course, the costs are um, an issue, no, no doubt about that. But I'm convinced it's, it's um, a good solution for the patients and um, I have a good handling and a good feeling with it and the patients too. So um, that's my experience. Thank you.